Christopher Laird is an author from Detroit in Michigan who's published two best-selling novels including Origins and Eternity's Past and he's got a new book out which is the third in the Origins series called Origins 3 The Children of Mykia. Hello, how are you today? I'm doing good, Toby. How are you this morning? I'm doing all right, yeah. Now, your new book, what is the sort of premise of it? Well, my third book uh, is an installment. It's the third installment uh, for my origin series. Yeah. And this book follows uh, the, my character, Exana, uh, who is a former dictator. She's been overthrown and she's, you know, living on, a, on this planet called Cordea, just kind of hiding out there from everybody else she's still wanted mm. by many galaxies and she's there with her daughter yeah so what ends up happening is her daughter is kidnapped so throughout the story you know exana is just going through many trials and tribulations to get her daughter back and as readers you know you know read the story uh, you get to explore her struggle and her pain and her suffering, not only as someone trying to rescue, rescue her daughter, but uh, just as a mother, just as a mother, yeah. just trying to get her daughter back. And at the same time, she's being accused of uh, there's a lot of uh, freighter hijackings that are going on and the crew is being killed and she's being accused of these killings. So oh. uh, through the course of all that's going on, uh, she's trying to get her daughter back and her and the Delta Corps military are trying to find out who are uh, doing these uh, freighter killings. So it's a very interesting story as full of political corruption, uh, deceit, uh, deadly secrets. Uh, there's everything in this novel that uh, any reader that, 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 that will want to, to read. Would you recommend reading the first two before reading this one? You know, that's a good question. Uh, you don't have to. Uh, Origins 3, it can be a standalone novel just on its own. Yeah. So you can definitely read this novel and you can follow through uh, everything that's going on uh, because in this novel, you get a backstory. So you do get a backstory of what's, you know, what happened in the past and, you know, it'll catch you up to current events. So you can definitely read this novel as just a standalone. And how does it compare to the books from before? Well, in Origins 3, The Children of Mykia, uh, you can see a definite, a definite evolution of the characters. Uh, you know, they've grown a lot and, you know, they've overcome old obstacles and they encounter new obstacles. So in this one, Exana, she, she tortured and killed a lot of the characters from the previous novels. Oh. And she's been a dictator and she's killed over billions of people. So now in this third installment, she's actually just trying to be a better person. And, uh, and now that she's a mother, she's definitely trying to be a better person. And she yeah. wants her daughter to, you know, lead a better life than she did. So Exana has these special powers. So she can bring people back to life and she can do anything with the snap of her fingers. So realizing that she has these powers now and at the request of her parents. Yeah. Uh, she vowed not to use her powers again for evil and not to do any harm to anybody else. So as she's kind of going through this evolution of herself and trying to better herself, uh, she's struggling how to love and be compassionate and to be a better person because she wasn't like that before. So now because of her daughter, she wants to be this new person and to make sure her daughter leads a, a, a better life. So you see a better evolution of the characters. Everybody's grown. Yeah. And even in this novel, there's a lot of comedy in it too. So oh, nice. uh, there's, yeah, yeah. There's something in it for, for, for everybody here. And when you first started writing the first book in this series, did you know that you were going to have two after, or were you just going to see how it went? Uh, you know what? I was going to see how it went. Uh, I didn't really have a vision of writing, you know, several more novels, you know, after, you know, after the first one, mm -hmm. the first one was a, you know, Amazon bestseller. So, and uh, it got a lot of attention, you know, as soon as it came out. Yeah. So, you know, I was very happy to hear that. And, you know, I just really was thinking about, well, man, I just, I'll just continue the series, like maybe like a star Wars or, uh, 
or maybe like an Indiana Jones type of thing where we can just keep writing, you know, stories yeah. Novels, yeah, afterward. So if the audience keeps enjoying it and people keep buying it, I'll definitely will keep writing more, more novels. And what inspired you originally when you started writing it? Well, so I've always been a fan. I've always been a fan of science fiction, yeah. even when I was a kid. So I wanted to Star Trek uh, type of guys and, I've always been intrigued by, you know, the universe and what's out there. So that's what that would really inspire me to write these novels. And, you know, even as a kid, just watching all these sci-fi thrills, even I, I like even sci-fi thrills from the 50s. Mm. So just watching, you know, 1950, you know, sci-fi thrills has always intrigued me. And I always wanted to write something, you know, kind of write my own story. Like I would say, wow, what would happen if, you know, this happened? Or if I write a story this way, you know, what would be the, the the turnout? So I've always had a a great interest in science fiction, and I just had my own ambitions just to write my own stories. And this book was a, a quick process writing it, or did it take you ages? That's a good question. It took me ages actually. Oh. Uh, I wrote it when I was I wrote it when I was fifteen. Wow. And uh, how old do you know? Yeah. <laughs> And I, I finished. I finished the first one when I was sixteen. That was this was in nineteen ninety six. So what ended up happening is, you know, when I went off to college, I totally forgot about the novel, and you know, I just focused on my studies, and uh, and then my life just changed totally. So I had to dedicate all my time, you know, to my college studies and everything else that was happening in my life. Yeah. So my book was just put on the back burner, and I just forgot about it, and. You know, occasionally I think about, oh, I wrote that book and, oh, maybe I should just pull it out and, you know, whatever. But that, it never happened. So over the course of uh, 20 years, and I moved maybe over seven times during that period. Wow. The, I, I had these three spiral notebooks that I still had. And, and out of all the things that I lost over the 20 years, I still had these three notebooks. They were still there. So I was in my I was in my closet one day and you know I was looking at them and you know the pages are old and yellow and you know they're you know yeah you know terrible looking but you know I pulled out those notebooks and said wow I was so passionate about writing this book and I had to ask myself what happened yeah so you know I just had to I just pulled it out one day and I had to change a lot of stuff because you know I was 16 and at the time I was 36 so a lot has changed since then yeah and even my perspective on life and science fiction has changed so I would have to change a lot of stuff in the manuscript so uh, I did that and took about another year to get things rolling but uh, we eventually got it published in 2017 Wow. And when you do write, do you do anything to get you in that mindset? Do you sit at a desk or stuff coming to you when you're just walking out and about? Well, it's a combination of a lot of things. I um, One thing I don't do, I don't force myself to write. Mm. So if I'm not feeling it or if it's not there, I'm not going to put it down on paper because I feel like it's not going to be genuine. It's not going to be authentic. It'll just yeah. be, just it'll be forced out and it's not going to come out right uh, when I actually put it on paper. Uh, I don't want to, I don't want to be generic. Yeah. I don't want to write, I don't want to, I don't want to write a generic story that, oh yeah, the girl steals, the bad guy steals the girl and the <laughs> bad guy saves the girl and the story's over with. That's, you know, that's, yeah. that's so. They're all like that. Yeah. And it's so generic, so I don't want to, you know, my story to come off that way. So I don't want to force it. But when I'm on a roll and I'm writing and I'm on fire, I keep writing. Just keep, I keep writing and I'm just on a ferocious roll. And I'll just keep going on that that tide until yeah. kind of just tire out. And then I get this writer's block and I'll just wait till I'm inspired again. But one thing I don't want to do is force it. So... Uh, just getting that momentum and staying on that tide and uh, just just keep it going. And have you ever hit the writer's block? You know, there are times when, you know, I'm very tempted to, okay, I haven't written in a while because I have this writer's block. Yeah. So let me just kind of just write something anyway. So what I'll do most of the time, well, what I do initially anyway is when I write my first draft, 
I don't worry about what I'm writing. I just mm. write down anything and just put it down on paper. Then when we do the second draft, we can, you know, edit and we can kind of change things around. So my first draft is just a free flowing uh, story yeah. without any, without any limitation. So okay. I don't want to put too much pressure on myself on the first draft. Just write what comes to you. Write what you're, even if you're not comfortable writing, you know, the first, some parts of the first draft, put something down anyway. So I put something down anyway. And in that second draft, we can kind of just go over like, okay, I don't like that. We can change it. Yeah. So I kind of go through that process. But, uh, you know, again, I think the main thing is just being authentic and genuine with what I write down. That's actually a really good idea of doing things. I've never really thought about writing before, but if I was going to do it, then I think I'd use that method. Yeah, I... You know, I myself find it very helpful. I know other people have their own methods of, of you know, writing and, you know, doing their mm -hmm. own things. But uh, I've, you know, heard other people that are creative, like filmmakers and writers and people yeah. in the field, you know, they would say they don't force themselves to write something or produce something that, you know, they don't feel like they could, they should put on screen or even put on paper. Mm -hmm. uh, everything should come natural. Everything should be organic. Uh, everything should come natural to you and you should feel comfortable with your product once it's, once it's finished. Definitely. Is this your full-time job writing? Oh, I, oh, I wish it was. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I, I really wish it was. Uh, so hopefully within a year or a year or two, uh, we hopefully, uh, we can start to go on that trend. Uh, you know, I've, I've always, I've been doing it since I was six years old. So, wow. and when I was, when I was a kid, just a kid, I would write down just pictures of what I wanted people to do. And I had a camcorder and I would just record uh, movies and they were like maybe six, oh. six to 10 minute movies. And I'd get all the kids in the neighborhood and I'd get my friends and we would just do these, you know, small short films. So I've been kind of doing this all my life and, you know, I never really got handsomely paid for it, but hopefully within a year or two, uh, I hope to be on that trend. Yeah, hopefully. And good luck to you. Oh, thank you. In your family, is there anyone who's believed in you and encouraged you to get into writing and being creative? You know what? Funny thing is, uh, I never had anybody uh, that really pushed me into this. Um, it was kind of like my my own self motivation to kind of you know do you know to kind of do this. Yeah, uh, I never had you know anybody by my side say, "Hey, you should do this," or "Hey, you should go in this direction." Uh, all my life, I've just been this uh, free flowing person. Like I just kind of just uh, kind of just kind of do what I need to do or do what I want to do. Yeah, and there's never been any real pressure to you know do something from others. Now, since I've been writing my novels, I've gained a lot of support from a lot of friends and family, uh, which feels very good, a tremendous amount of support. So uh, I, I, ju I just want to thank all my friends and family uh, you know, for the support. It's, it yeah. means a whole lot to me. And, um, and, they, and, and they really enjoy my novels, and not just because they're friends in my family, you know, yeah. but, but, they, you know, but they, they really do enjoy it. And uh, that brings a lot of uh, happiness to me. Yeah. In your free time, do you like to get up to anything other than writing or is it taking over your life? Uh, no. Um, you know, my free time, I like to go fishing. So uh, fishing, mm. definitely. I've been doing that since I was a kid, too. So uh, yeah. fishing has been a whole, it's been a part of my life just as much as writing. And uh, I also love art. So art is something that's, you know, that I do in my spare time as well. Um, you know, if we, we, if we had an actual face-to-face -face, uh, interview, like my house, I have artwork all around my house. So you would see all types wow. of, you would see all types of um, paintings from the Impressionist period and uh, from the Baroque period and Renaissance paintings and artwork. So I, I do that in my spare time. But, uh, you know, you mentioned something earlier about, you know, about I writing ideas do they come to you during the day or just when you're doing yeah. stuff that does happen to me so 
uh, on a daily basis, like an ideal, it'll just pop in my head. I could be drinking coffee or eating dinner somewhere or just out on a walk and this idea will just pop in my head. And, oh, I, I got to write this down. Well, if I'm having a dream, if I'm having a dream in the middle of the night and this crazy idea that I dreamt about, you know, I got to write it down then because, you know, I'll forget about it in the morning when, when I wake up. So I got to <laughs> I got to write it down as soon as I have this crazy dream. So in a kind of a crazy way, maybe writing does take over my life 24 seven. But I also have other pleasures that I have that uh, kind of I engage in as well. Yeah. And where are we able to purchase your book so we can read and enjoy it? Well, yeah, uh, everybody can go on my website, uh, chrislaird.net. That's C-H-R-I-S-L-A-I-R-D. The proper way to spell Chris. Right. (laughs) Uh, Yeah, so chrislaird.net. And on my website, you can actually go on my website. You can, uh, I have some clothing, a clothing line for Exana. So you can buy buy some T-shirts for hoodies, uh, coffee mugs. Uh, you can purchase my novels uh, and it'll send you a link to Amazon and Barnes and Noble uh, to purchase my books. And there's also interviews on there. You can check me out and you can also go to Amazon.com. Oh. Uh, my books are on there. Uh, you can buy my new book, Origins 3, The Children of Mykia. That book is on there as well. Uh, you can go to Barnes and Noble.com, uh, Books a Million.com. You can go to Lulu.com. It's L-U-L-U.com. Or you can go to any major uh, book retailer online and pick up my book. That's pretty much everywhere then, isn't it? Yeah, pretty much everywhere. Thank you so much for coming on the show today, Christopher. Hey, thank you so much for having me. I had a great time.